What is an idea? What is a thought? And how do we think all these great and new ideas that are worth spreading? My name is Henning Beck. I am a brain researcher and I want to show you what is going on in your, on in your mind when you use information to give rise to new thoughts. And this is important because information is all around us. Uh, many people think it all starts with data. Data, the resource of the 21st century. Data is everywhere. Companies collect our data. We do data analysis and data correlation. But in fact, data itself is pretty simple. It's just a collection of letters and numbers, signs you can process electronically but have no meaning. And you can measure data, but you cannot measure an idea. Because when are you really creative or innovative? When you have a thousand thoughts, only one, the real game changer. So maybe information is more important. And we have so many tools nowadays to acquire information. We have smartphones, mobile devices, the internet everywhere, but never mix up information with having an idea or knowledge. Because you can Google information, but you cannot Google an idea because having an idea, acquiring knowledge, understanding stuff, this is what's happening in your mind when you use information to change the way you think. So what is that kind of thinking? Well, everything you see here is just the surface of what is going on in your mind when you actually think. Most of the things run subconsciously, which makes it damn hard to investigate, but even more interesting. So let's zoom into the brain to check out what is going on when we think. Um, many people think the brain is something like a supercomputer, like the ultimate calculating engine. It is supposed to be um, extremely fast, uh, super connected and highly accurate. When you have something on your mind, like right now hopefully, a picture or an image or something like that, you can see it very sharp and precise and switch very easily, much faster than a computer, right? A computer you can put on your desktop easily calculates 3.4 billion times a second. Brain cells are much slower and only do 500 operations maximum speed. Um, computers don't do any mistakes. A rough estimation is one error in a trillion operations and brains, probably you know that from your personal life, much more error prone and do mistakes a billion times as often. In computers, you can plug it to the internet and you're connected with the world, contrary to the brain. Uh, because the brain is 99% self-oriented, most of the nerve fibers never get outside of your skull. Most of the brain cells never see what's going on in reality. So from this perspective, you have to say, okay, the brain is everything but perfect. It is lame, it is lousy, and it is selfish. And still it is working. Yeah. Look around you, working brains, wherever I look, more or less. But still, each, of, each one of you has the power to outperform every computer system by a very simple experiment. I can show you in a minute. So what do you see here? Face, you might say. Totally correct. I could also say it's just a collection of fruits and vegetables, but you see a face. And what's interesting is not that you do it, but how fast you do that. Because when your brain cells are really that slow, you can only do like 20, 30, maybe 40 operations within that split second. Computer software needs many more steps, thousands, even millions of steps to come to the same result. This leads us to the fundamental principle of how we think, because it's totally different from anything we know of in our world. So how would a computer approach that kind of problem? Well, computers use algorithms. Algorithms, basically stepwise recipes telling you what to do. So when a computer faces a certain problem, for instance, recognize a face or solve an equation or whatsoever, the basic principle goes like this. You have an input, then you process that input according to the algorithm, finally reaching an output. Input, processing, output. That's why computers sometimes break down and end up in a blue screen. Yeah. Computers break down. Brains do not break down, unless you apply some external force or alcohol or something like that. But usually, brains are very robust. And that's because we think with a trick. When an input hits our eyes, um, the input is 
processed by the sensory cells in our eyes and they get activated and activate the neighbors in this neuronal network. So this is like um, a simplified model of your brain in action. Brain cells are dumb on their own, cannot do anything much. But if you have a lot of them, you end up with some, something we call an activity pattern, an activity state of that specific neuronal network. Yeah? And this activity pattern, this is what we call a thought. Big difference to a computer. The brain does not distinguish between processing and output because processing the information is the thought itself. Mm, that's kind of tricky, but maybe it's similar to, um, to an orchestra. If you look at an orchestra from outside, seeing all the musicians sitting next to each other but not playing any music, you have no idea whatsoever melody this orchestra is able to play, just like the brain. When you look at the brain from outside, you have no clue whatsoever thoughts this system is able to think. In an orchestra, the melody emerges when the musicians start to play with each other and synchronize themselves. So the music, the melody, is among the players, just like a thought in the brain is among the brain cells when they synchronize, synchronize with each other. So a thought is not located anywhere, a, a thought is how the brain cells interact and how they process the information. So. That's different to a computer because no matter what kind of processing the computer uses, whether it's algorithmic or a deep learning network or whatever fancy method we will come up with in the future, it will always be input processing output without mistakes, hopefully. But if you don't do any mistakes, you just end up at the place you're a program for, but nowhere new. Computers are intelligent, but intelligence is nothing special. Intelligence means that you follow the rules as fast and efficient as possible, but not to change rules. No super intelligent computer will ever rule the world because intelligence is not enough. You need to be a rule breaker, a game changer, you need to be crazy and creative too. And it's the mistake in our thinking, not the perfection, that separates us from the non-creative machines. What do I mean by mistake? Well, it means that we can come up with a new thought, a new activity pattern, without knowing before whether this is correct or not. Slightly differently actuated, we get a new pattern, a new thought, but we don't know whether this one is correct or not. We try, we fail, we do it again. But there's no objective criterion for, an, for a good idea. Well, there's one thing. When is an idea a good one? when somebody else says, this is a good idea. But this social interaction, this social feedback, this try and error, this social practice cannot be digitized right now. And that's one reason why truly new ideas will stay analog in our future. You see that this kind of thinking gives us a great advantage when it comes to create new ideas. And we call that special type of thinking, concept thinking or categorized thinking. And instead of explaining the theoretical background and explaining um, what's behind that, I give you an example. How you create new ideas. Who thinks that this is a chair? Please raise your hand. All right, thank you. So who thinks that these are chairs too? Please raise your hand. All right. Very well, you're quite familiar with furniture. It's very good. Yes. And here's the task. Who thinks that these are also chairs? Yeah, the longer I wait, the more hands I see. Thank you. But why? Why do you think that this blue plastic ball with three stumps is a chair? Well, this is the big difference between the computer world and the brain world. What you see up here is what we call deep learning. Yeah, you give a self-learning algorithm a gazillion of images and a couple of hundred images of chairs, and then it analyzes the whole data and says with 98% certainty that a chair is an object with four legs, a seat, and a backrest. But we don't do that. We understand that a chair is not a special shaped object, but something you can sit on. And once you understood that, you see chairs everywhere. You can create new chairs with new designs and features. Here's another example um, how you do that, basically. 
Um, computers learn, but learning is nothing special. Um, because animals learn, um, blackbirds learn, dolphins learn, um, elephants learn, computers learn, we understand. Deep learning is great, but deep understanding is better. Because when you learn something, you can unlearn it. But once you understood it, you cannot de-understand it again. Because understanding means that you change the way you process information. And since processing and output is one and the same in our brain, we understand very fast, on the spot.